April 1945. As the Russians fight their way into Berlin in the final days of World War II, they hope to capture the leader of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, alive. Outside the bunker, Hitler's last headquarters, two bodies are prepared for final disposal. There are those who will swear that the corpses dumped in this shallow grave and burned are those of Adolf Hitler and his mistress, Eva Braun. Recent scientific findings indicate that the woman's body the Russians claim to have found beside Hitler's may not have been that of Eva Braun. As a forensic scientist, it is very satisfying, of course, to be able to say that you have the conclusive proofs. Uh, that, however, in the case of Eva Braun's uh, story, is not possible. Did she escape, as persistent rumors claim? Is it possible that Eva Braun is alive today? presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. The story that the Germans had burned the bodies of Adolf Hitler and his mistress, Eva Braun, after they had committed suicide, was released to the world by the Russians after they had captured Berlin. The evidence was mostly hearsay. The inner circle of Nazi leadership scattered, leaving behind the charred remains purported to be Hitler and Eva. But were they? Who was Eva Braun? There seems little out of the ordinary about Eva Braun, born of respectable middle-class parents in Munich in 1912. She grew up to be an attractive young girl. She was the second of Frau Braun's three daughters. An indifferent student, she had two interests, dancing and photography. Most of what we know about Eva comes from her snapshot albums and home movies, found in a trunk in Munich at the end of the war. They show a healthy, spirited young woman, fun-loving and vivacious. She seems to have had a natural love of animals and children. Proud of her slim figure, she was fond of a variety of athletic activities. Hitler later complained that she wasn't plump enough. Author David Irving tracked Eva Braun, among others, during 10 years he spent finding and interviewing German eyewitnesses released from Russian prisons. Eva Braun was the uh, archetypal ordinary woman. She was the kind of woman that you'll find outside in Oxford Street, walking up and down in the lunch break. She was a photographer's assistant. And this is how she got to know Adolf Hitler, of course, because she was the assistant, the laboratory assistant, to Adolf Hitler's personal photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann. She met Hitler through Hoffmann in 1933 when she was 20. Hitler was attracted by her fresh young personality and she became his mistress. The first years of their association were frustrating and painful for Eva. Often months would pass without a word from him. When her suicide attempt almost succeeded, Hitler became alarmed. He moved quickly, buying her a house near his own in Munich. Later, he took her to Berchtesgarten, his mountain retreat. Here, he installed her in rooms adjoining his own. Eva was happy now. She was recognized as the mistress of the Fuhrer, at least by his close associates. But this was never allowed by Hitler to be known to the German people. These rare 1930s color home movies of Hitler, Eva, and their cronies at Berchtesgarten reveal Eva's true role in Hitler's life. Even at Berchtesgarten, she had to compete with others for his attention. A flow of officials on urgent business demanded his time. Goebbels constantly needed to confer with him. Himmler was a frequent subject for Eva's camera and always close by, Martin Bormann, Hitler's ever-present shadow. Eva, a good photographer, moved about freely with her camera when Hitler's close associates were present. 
But when outsiders arrived, she was kept out of sight. And there's one very nice series of photographs that she takes of the arrival of a foreign potentate. And she's up there in her little attic window peering down. And she writes in the caption of these photographs she puts in her album, there they are down there, and I'm up here, and nobody's allowed to know about me. And she obviously takes a certain amount of relish, a rather schoolgirlish relish still, in being the forbidden mistress of the Fuhrer. In the few brief scenes of Hitler and Eva together, she keeps a respectful distance. There is no indication of intimacy between them. Watching these frivolous scenes, one cannot help but be stunned by the realization that they are occurring at the same time as the horrors of the Holocaust. One wonders how much Ava knew or how much she chose to forget. As the war progressed, Ava's movies show many scenes of Hitler and his entourage leaving their mountain retreat. He would be spending less and less time with her. As time passed, the atmosphere at the Berchtesgaden Garden left Ava lonely and depressed. Ava Braun had been insulated by Hitler from the reality of the war. So it was a shock in 1945 when Hitler's world began to crumble. He'd been defeated in his attempt to conquer Russia and unable to bomb Britain into submission. With Allied armies pushing toward Berlin from the west, and the Russians pouring into the city from the east, Hitler retreated to a concrete bunker deep below the center of Berlin. Although Hitler had survived an assassin's bomb, it had left him partially paralyzed, and those who visited him in the bunker during those last days were shocked at his deterioration. They described him as a broken old man, though he still treated them to occasional flashes of rage. The attempt on his life had fueled his mistrust of his generals. He believed that he alone could dictate successful military strategy. His orders reflected his madness. In April 1945, Eva realized that the war was only weeks from its end. The end comp was beginning in Berlin. The Russians had attacked again on the Oder. They were already fighting in the streets of Berlin. For her safety, Hitler had insisted that Eva stay away from Berlin. But she defied his orders and came to join him during the last days in the bunker. Ava must have known she was going to her death. Hitler recognizes this act of courage on her part, and he sees in her a kind of courage that even his most outstanding generals, not even the famous SS, Waffen SS generals, have shown. They've all been finding excuses to get out. Very few are staying down there in that rather dusty, concrete smelling atmosphere in the bunker, which one of his staff compared with a, with a submarine prowling beneath the streets of Berlin. Nobody likes it. The shells are pounding in overhead. The concrete membranes of the bunker are vibrating every morning to the artillery bombardment from the Russians just a few miles down the road. And here was the girl with guts. Although Hitler continued to lash out viciously against his generals, he now became uncharacteristically tender with Eva. To a certain extent, he's setting her off against the generals. He's trying to say to himself and also to the other people in the bunker, she came. She stood, stood by me. The generals have abandoned me. He starts talking about her as Mrs. Hitler. That's the first thing to his adjutants. And then the next thing is they find out that a wedding ceremony is being prepared. On April 29th, Ava put on her favorite dress. A local registrar is found, and with Goebbels as best man and Kemka and Bormann as witnesses, this extraordinary ceremony takes place under the streets of Berlin. Hitler signs the document with a firm hand. But Eva Brown signs very nervously. She, she signs Eva Bruh. She begins signing her maiden name. Then she realizes, of course, that now she's Hitler. She crosses out the Brown and writes in Hitler instead. Congratulated by the secretaries, like any bride, Eva is radiantly happy. She has achieved her dream. But Eva Braun has one more day to live.
Hitler gets up on April the 30th, 1945, and he knows it's, it's going to be the last day of his life. And he calls in Otto Günscher, who's been his SS adjutant for several years, and he's still alive in Cologne, and who personally told me the whole story when he came out of Russian captivity. And he um, says to Günscher, you've got to get hold of 200 litres of gasoline, because Mrs. Hitler and I, Eva, were going to commit suicide this afternoon, and you are responsible for making sure that nothing whatsoever survives, just ashes. I don't want the Russians getting hold of our bodies and setting them up in some kind of Russian waxworks, a, a panopticum in Moscow. At 3.30 on the afternoon of April 30th, Hitler and Eva retired to his sitting room. It is known that Hitler had two cyanide capsules and two pistols. In a copy of his will, Hitler stated that Eva had chosen to commit suicide with him. Her feelings are revealed in the last letter she wrote to her sister. I must write you these words so that you will not feel sad for us. It is rather we who are filled with sorrow because it is your fate to live on into the chaos that will follow. For myself, I am glad to die at the side of the Führer. Witnesses say that Hitler shot himself and that Eva took poison. The prearranged ritual was carried out. Hitler's body was wrapped in a blanket to hide the blood. The Russians were now only a few hundred yards away. As Otto Gernscher carried out Hitler's last orders, Goebbels stared grimly at the proceedings. Hitler's most devout disciple, he was determined that he and his wife would follow the Führer in the same death the following day. on the testimony of the few surviving Nazis who were present, all fiercely loyal to Hitler and Eva. Did they fabricate the story to give Hitler a fittingly Wagnerian death and to cover Eva's escape? Recent evidence may prove this to be true. On May 3rd, the Russian flag flew over the chancellery. Berlin had fallen to the Russian armies. There was a great deal of confusion as to what had happened to Hitler. Russian investigators digging near the entrance to the bunker discovered the bodies of a man and a woman. At first, they announced them to be those of Hitler and his mistress, Eva Braun. Later, they changed their story, stating they believed Hitler to be alive. H. Trevor Roper, now a well-known British historian, was sent to Berlin to try to discover what had happened to Hitler. I was in British intelligence at the end of the war, and uh, after the fall of Berlin, Hitler was missing and he was missing for five months or so and nobody knew what had happened to him and the Russians uh, accused the British of concealing him in their uh, zone of Germany for use against them and the British authorities appointed me to find out what had happened. Marshal Zhukov 
the Russian commander-in-chief, first stated to Allied officers that Hitler had married Eva Braun, which had not been known before, uh, and that they had committed suicide. And uh, no sooner had this been released uh, to the world than Zhukov changed his view and said he had no reason to believe that Hitler was dead. Uh, he thought he was probably alive, uh, and after that he felt totally silent. Marshal Zhukov said it. Marshal Zhukov told Eisenhower, told Churchill, he told Truman. He said, we found no trace of Hitler. There were several Americans who visited Stalin in Moscow at this time, and to them, Stalin was saying that Hitler was alive. So the Zhukov's true deduction from the inquiries which he had made in Berlin uh, uh, were put into reverse, and the official line became that Hitler was alive, and that was maintained for the rest of Stalin's life. Thus, the Russians set in motion in some way the legend that Adolf Hitler had escaped by submarine to a South America, that he was still alive in Germany, he was waiting to return. Eva Brown, of course, part of that legend. No story seemed too outlandish to print. Reports from people who claimed to have seen Hitler or Eva continued to come in from all over the world. One woman who prefers to remain anonymous claims to have seen Eva in a village in Tibet. My husband and I were traveling in the Himalayas when we came across a woman we were convinced was Eva Braun. I have seen her pictures and I would know her anywhere. When later reports of escaping Nazis were found to be true, the stories did not sound so strange. Many of the leading Nazis were brought to trial at Nuremberg. However, there were some who escaped and remained hidden for years in South America. It was easy for them to become lost in remote areas or in the cities among the large German population of Argentina. It was here that Eichmann was finally captured, kidnapped by Israelis, and brought to trial. It has been more than 36 years since the fall of Berlin, but an air of mystery still surrounds those last days in the bunker. Identification of bodies through their dental characteristics is now an exact science, and recent information concerning Eva Braun has been published by international forensic expert Professor Radar Songness, founder of the School of Dentistry at UCLA. Based on actual x-rays taken of Hitler's skull at the time of the bomb attempt on his life, Professor Songness in his UCLA lab built an exact replica of Hitler's dental structure. He then made comparisons with the post-mortem reports. In fingerprints, we require 12 concordant points. In the case of Adolf Hitler's condition, with so many very characteristic dental crowns and bridges and root fillings and so forth, uh, evidence is now that we have 26 concordant points between antemortem and postmortem information. And as a result of this, uh, I, we can now say with absolute certainty that the remains of Adolf Hitler have absolutely, definitely been identified. Eva Brown's case is an entirely different matter. In that case, we do not have a number of concordant points. The Russians have indicated that the only conclusive proof that they may have Eva Brown is a bridge in the lower right jaw of Eva Brown. I have uh, interviewed uh, the uh, dental assistant who uh, was present when things were placed in the mouth of the patients, and she has indicated to me that this bridge was made, but the time ran out and there was no time to put it in. She told Dr. Songness of a visit by Soviet investigators a few days after the fall of Berlin. The Russians demanded all dental information concerning Hitler and Eva. It was a tense period, and she was terrified. Indeed, she was later sentenced to many years in Russian prisons, probably to ensure her silence. She remembered that a dental bridge had been made for Eva, but never delivered. The Russians took the bridge and later claimed they had found it as part of Ava's charred remains. Here I have prepared a model showing the space that was supposed to have been filled by this bridge. And I've also made a model of the bridge. And here I will now insert it where it should have been inserted in Eva Brown's mouth. And the mystery of the bridge is that with the fire that burnt up half uh, of her head and part of her jawbone, these the plastic teeth in front uh, should, uh, in this case, have been almost evaporated. But according to the pictures the Russians have shown, 
uh, it looked essentially intact. Based the, on the fact that the bridge work is the only evidence that the Russians really are claiming uh, for her uh, identification, I find that I am not able to make a post-mortem identification of uh, Eva Braun. Eva Braun died with Hitler in the bunker. Of that I have no doubt there's plenty of evidence and I'm sure of it. Uh, while I am not suggesting that uh, Eva Braun is, uh, has escaped and is alive, uh, while I believe that she probably is dead, uh, I must, uh, from a scientific point of view, indicate that we do not have any evidence from the information now available that, in fact, she has been identified. Today, what remains of the entrance to the bunker lies just inside East Berlin. It is necessary to get permission from the communists to get even close to it. Do the remains of Eva Braun, or the answer to what became of her, lie buried beneath this pile of rubble? What became of those Nazis who were present in the last days in the bunker? Joseph Goebbels and his wife committed suicide the next day after they had poisoned their five children. Their bodies were burned. Martin Bormann died trying to escape through the Berlin subways. Kempke, Hitler's chauffeur, spent years in Russian prisons, where he repeatedly stuck to the story we have reenacted here. Otto Gernsche is a successful businessman in Germany today. Thank you.